September of 1956, when I was five years old, my mother made me go to kindergarten at Fowler Street School in Atlanta. There were two kindergarten classes. My teacher was jovial and overly plump. The other teacher was wrinkled and skinny and looked oddly like Benjamin Franklin, albeit a gaunt version. I didn't want to go to kindergarten. I told that many times to my mother. She still made me go. She reminded me that my father wanted me to go to college, and this was the first step in that journey. My father really did drill into me the importance of going to college. He had already decided I would go to Georgia Tech. Everything I did was supposed to be a constructive step toward that goal. With that lofty aspiration in place, every day, Monday through Friday, I attended kindergarten. However, I couldn't help but think what would happen if I messed up during my long pilgrimage to Georgia Tech. Kindergarten wasn't so bad. After a few months, I had the hang of it. In retrospect, it was basic training for five-year-olds. One day, as Easter was approaching, my teacher got sick. They didn't tell us what the sickness was, but she was out for a few weeks. She was nice and encouraging. In her absence, the other kindergarten teacher, Miss Cootie, taught both classes. She was mean and seemed desirous of my ultimate failure. On the Friday before Easter, Miss Cootie had decided all the kids in kindergarten would finger paint something about Easter. She gave everyone a sheet of paper. She got all the various colors of paint ready and instructed everyone to proceed by dipping their fingers into the paint. It was a confusing activity. The kids grouped around the paint jars and started spilling and dripping paint everywhere. It was a big mess, and I didn't want to get involved, so I just sat there. When Miss Cootie discovered I was not participating, she sternly asked why. I told her my reason. She became angry and started yelling at me. I didn't know what to do, so I didn't respond. That just made her angrier. I instantly developed an intense aversion to finger painting. I firmly decided I would never finger paint for the rest of my life. When Miss Cootie finally stopped yelling at me, she grabbed me and took me to the principal's office. She told Mrs. Bradshaw, the principal, about my insurrection. To hear her tell it, I had disrupted the entire Atlanta City school system. Then she stomped out and screamed, He can't come back to class until he does a finger painting. Well, that was it. I would never go to college now. I was certain being banished from kindergarten meant they would not let me go to Georgia Tech. I was an outcast and doomed to darkness. Strangely, I didn't really care. I had enough of school. I would go the way of Cain and make the best of it. Nevertheless, it seemed a bit harsh to receive eternal punishment for not participating in finger painting. Mrs. Bradshaw, the principal, retrieved some paper and a jar of blue finger paint. She explained to me how it wasn't so bad to do finger painting. She said she would personally wash my hands afterward. Mrs. Bradshaw was giving me the opportunity to reconsider my rebellion. She was gracefully offering forgiveness. And as principal, she had the power to make it happen. How did I get into this mess? I wished I could push a magic button and have a redo of this day. Then she said she'd have to call my father if I continued to refuse. Now, that got my attention. I had to decide between finger painting and a public whipping. Yes, they did that back then, and I'm not speaking from theoretical supposition. I'm frankly relating my experience. With the situation fully exposed, I slowly moved my finger to the jar of blue paint. I dipped it carefully, 
I made two circles on the paper. Mrs. Bradshaw asked what it was supposed to be, and I said, a rabbit. She smiled big. She cleaned my finger with a cloth and ceremoniously marched me back to class. When Miss Cootie saw us, she demanded to see the required finger painting. As if she had done it herself, Mrs. Bradshaw proudly showed it to her. Miss Cootie asked, did he do that? Miss Bradshaw said, with his finger only, and then left. I and Miss Cootie stood there glaring at each other for a few minutes. She looked like she had just been deprived of a trophy, which she believed was her rightful possession. Then she reluctantly hollered, Sit down. Redemption. I was a member of the class again. I was back on track to go to Georgia Tech. That was a close call. It was such a simple thing to mishandle a situation and such a pride-swallowing process to restore order again. That confrontation with Miss Cootie was just one instance of many misadventures, which also required me to seek forgiveness. Through the years, I encountered the specter of Miss Cootie many times. There are many people who will encourage your success, but sadly, there are also many who will try to wreck your life. My hard-learned advice is not to mess up. But if you do, repent without delay.